Hello, my name is Dr. Eamon Shamil. Hi, I'm Dr. Prafal Ravi. We're going to talk through a case of It Burns When I Pee. So, the case presentation involves a 38 year old woman who presented with a three day history of a burning sensation when she passed urine. She also reports avoiding urine more frequently, but she denies any urgency when passing urine, any visible blood in her urine, any vaginal discharge, or any urinary incontinence. On physical examination, the key findings were a temperature of 38.1 degrees and suprapubic tenderness. There was no renal angle or flank tenderness. Her investigations, urinalysis showed positivity for nitrites, protein and leukocytes, but it was negative for blood. A midstream urine microscopy culture and sensitivity, which was sent on presentation, grew E. coli. So, Eamon, what is the diagnosis here? The most likely diagnosis in this case is a urinary tract infection. How do you diagnose a UTI? To diagnose a UTI, I use clinical history, a urine dipstick, and sending a sample of urine to the laboratory for culture. A clinical history alone of dysuria and frequency is associated with a 90% probability of a UTI in a healthy woman. Dysuria means burning or stinging when pass urine, passing urine, and frequency means passing urine more often. Urine dipsticks are simple and easy to use bedside tests that can be performed in the clinic or in a hospital setting. A positive test shows the presence of nitrites and leukocytes. Nitrites are breakdown products of nitrogen produced by bacteria and are only present in the urine if you have bacteria. Leukocytes are white blood cells that fight bacteria in the urine and again are only present if you have bacteria in the urine. These tests need to be interpreted with caution. Urine dipsticks have a sensitivity of 68 to 90 percent, meaning that up to a third of patients who have a UTI will not test positive. They have a specificity of 65 to 87 percent, meaning that if the urine dipstick is negative, up to a third of patients may still have a UTI. Finally, the gold standard for diagnosing a UTI is collecting urine, a midstream sample ideally, and, and a clean catch, and sending it to the laboratory for microscopy, culture and sensitivity, or MC and S, before antibiotics are started. What is the pathogenesis of urinary tract infection? The pathogenesis differs between women and men. In women, a UTI develops when urinary pathogens from the bowel vagina colonise the urethral mucosa and ascend via the urethra into the bladder. Risk factors include being female, previous urinary tract infection or sexual intercourse. Urinary tract infections are uncommon in men. They are usually secondary to a structural or functional abnormality, most commonly prostate enlargement. What organisms commonly cause UTI? When thinking about what causes a UTI, we can divide this into organisms in the community and organisms in the hospital. The commonest organism in the community is E. coli or Escherichia coli. This causes 90% of community acquired UTIs. E. coli causes about 40% of hospital acquired UTIs, the remainder of which are enteric gram-negative bacteria such as Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Serratia and Pseudomonas species. It's worth noting that urinary catheters increase the risk of UTIs and the risk of urinary tract infection increases each day they, they remain in situ. Proteus species are associated with kidney stones as Proteus produces the enzyme urease which converts urea into ammonia which makes the urine more alkaline and favours stone development. What are the complications of UTI? These include recurrent cystitis, pyelonephritis and sepsis. Recurrent cystitis in women is due to reinfection rather than the dormancy of pathogens in the uroepithelium or ineffective treatment. There's no association between recurrent urinary tract infections and urinating habits, the use of tampons, 
precoital or postcoital voiding and daily fluid intake. Pyelonephritis is caused by bacterial migration from the bladder via the ureters into the kidney. It can be life-threatening and lead to permanent kidney damage if not properly treated. In our particular patient, there was no renal angle or flank tenderness, which may suggest pyelonephritis. The final serious complication is sepsis, which can be caused by bacteria entering the bloodstream and affecting other organs. What is the treatment of UTI? Interestingly, up to 40% of UTIs resolve spontaneously without any antimicrobial therapy. Initially, uncomplicated urinary tract infections can be treated with narrow-spectrum antibiotics such as trimethoprim or nitrofurantoin. The antibiotics should be adjusted according to sensitivities which are grown from the microscopy culture and sensitivity in the laboratory. Complicated urinary tract infections um, such as the ones we mentioned previously, recurrent cystitis, pyelonephritis or sepsis, require broader spectrum antibiotics initially. These include comoxiclav, quinolones or aminoglycoside. To summarise, a urine dipstick is helpful but not always diagnostic for a urinary tract infection. Collecting a midstream urine sample for MCNS before starting antibiotic therapy is the gold standard for diagnosis. E. coli is the commonest cause of UTIs in the community and can be treated with narrow spectrum antibiotics like trimethoprim or nitrofurantoin until sensitivities are established. Thank you very much for listening.